There's a lot here to eat and there's even more to climb on. And as you can see, goats doing the goat thing, they're already climbing up the cliff walls. Plenty of food down here, but you know, why not climb? A little bit better, a little bit more fun. So not only is this gonna be a job that the goats really enjoy because of what they have to eat, the terrain suits them perfectly. I mean, look at this. Can't be down here on the flat ground. No, he has to be standing on the edge of the cliff. And look at this guy over here. Richie is already up to the top. Oh, not to be done, uh, outdone. We have Ang. He is also going to climb to the top. And Eska, she just, that's her natural spot right there on the cliff, hanging off the edge of the cliff. No fear whatsoever. Who's climbing over here? <laughs> Jacob's climbing. The monsters, Luna and Cinnamon. Cinnamon's already at the top. Luna found herself a nice little spot near the top, but still get to stand on the cliff to just be barely hanging on by anything. If you look at her feet, not hanging on by much. That's all they need. That's all they need to climb is just a little, little ledge little bump in the smooth stone and they can climb unbelievably well. I'll take the easy way up. A little bit easier path right here. Get to the top, see what they're looking at. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, Richie. Well, it's nice and high right here. There's some higher stuff on the other side, fortunately for them. Drive me nuts. They have to walk on the edge. They can't walk down the middle. Nope, can't walk down the middle where it's nice and safe and flat. They like to walk all along the edge to make me nervous. I think they see it makes me tense and they're like, that's what we should do. You can tell by the man's tense look on his face. Let's lean out over the edge and eat the stuff. Guys, there's plenty of stuff to eat at the ground level. Hey everyone, we've been here in Newport for 24 hours. Um, this morning got off to a little bit of a rainy start, but it has been beautiful out since 10 o'clock this morning. That It's been just a wonderful day here in Newport. It is absolutely beautiful. Well, we've been here for 48 hours and the goats are being lazy today. It's a beautiful day, but uh, it's 2.30 in the afternoon and some of them haven't been off the bus yet. So I've just called them off to come out and eat a little bit. Uh, they're just relaxing on the bus for some reason today. I'm getting nothing done <laughs> and they're not doing anything. And what's gonna happen is, is they're gonna eat well into the night again. And it's much easier to work during the day for me because it's light out, but nope. <laughs> I'll be trying to get stuff done in the dark with the lights on. But uh, it's a gorgeous day. I think they're coming out. They look so slow and tired. They did eat late last night. We got Janora over here getting a snack. Cinnamon, maybe, no. Cinnamon's like, no, too early. It's only 2.30 in the afternoon. There's her sister, maybe they'll go up and play.
Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we are here on day four in Newport. It is a beautiful day, beautiful bright sunny sky. Not a cloud in the sky, which is unusual for Newport. Usually there's those big white puffy clouds, but it's a very clear day today. Um, it's not early in the morning, it's almost 11 o'clock, but uh, it's early for the goats. We have Holly up on the rocks. We have Liberty down here, just waking up and stretching out with Bill. The monsters, Cinnamon and Luna, they were out earlier this morning. They were out eating quite early with, let's see, here they are. Tina and Lola hiding back there. So they were they were out. The rest of the guys, uh, they're pretty much being lazy as always. But they'll come out at some point, hopefully uh, sooner than later, while well, it's still nice and cool out. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here in Newport. It is day six and the goats are out eating in the rain. It's a very light rain right now. So they decided, or they sensed that it's gonna be rainy tonight, which it is. So they all jumped off the bus. It's their third outing of the day. It's unusual for them to be out three times so soon, but <laughs> uh, when they know there's rain coming, they wanna eat. So they came out early, working in the cool rain. Hey, Jacob. Jacob's been having a little bit of an itchy ear day, so I gotta stay near him. When Jacob starts itching his ear, he has this reaction that looks like a seizure. It's not, um, it's a penny peel. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but the vet told me once what it was called. But what we found is as long as he's near me 24 seven, when it starts, I can stop him from scratching his ear and he doesn't have the same reaction. So right at the moment, it just means him and I are connected. <laughs> um, luckily we're, we're uh, buddies. So we're always together anyhow, but it, I mean, it's without fail. It has to be 24 seven and uh, I don't mind. I don't mind doing that for my little man. Right now, they're eating a lot of acorns off the ground. Uh, there's still lots here to eat, but apparently acorns are a big treat. So they are eating acorns like they're going out of style. And when they run out of the ones on the ground, they shake the trees and they get more. So they're, they're having a lot of those. Um, they're eating a lot of other things to go with it, thankfully, because the tannins and the acorns could upset their belly but they're smart enough to eat a whole bunch of other stuff with it, and they're doing fine. You got Aang over there eating something different right now. Eska, you can eat, you can eat the poison ivy. You've got lots of poison ivy on this tree. I'll even pull it down for you if you want. They do like poison ivy, but they eat it so hot you can't reach it. But if we pull it down, they can. Oh, it stuff's good, huh? Good stuff. This is <laughs> the vine is around Jay, and Richie said, Kevin, rather. The vine is around Jay, and Kevin is chasing him to get the leaves before he takes off with it. Did you get him, little bud? <laughs> And they're distracted by acorns again. And if there's a tree to climb on, hey, we might as well do that. Luna and Eska are climbing on a dead tree that has fallen, giving them another three to four feet of height on the trees that are next to it. So they're getting all the stuff that they can't reach from the ground. And Eska decided to jump down for some reason. Let's go check on Holly. She's over here. She likes to eat by herself undisturbed. Somebody made her angry this morning. I'm still not sure who. But I know somebody did because if you look at the top of that head, it is pink. It was red earlier. 
uh, she busted her head open, I think. I can't find any real abrasions or cuts on her, so it might have been whoever else's head that she hit. Which, uh, her boyfriend, Bill here, that happens to him occasionally because he has a skur. Skurs are, when they dehorn goats when they're babies, they burn the horn, and if they leave a little piece behind, that will grow like a fingernail out of the, out of the center of their head, and those are called skurs. Skurs are not great. <laughs> uh, they can be really bad, and then we have to have them re-removed as an adult. We've only had to do that once, but it was very necessary. Every time he would knock his skur off, he would be just a bloody mess. It looked like something out of a massacre. His face would be dripping with blood. And we couldn't have that. So the second time it happened, we brought him over to Tufts and they dehorned him perfectly. And now that's Oliver back at the sanctuary. They dehorned him perfectly. No more bleeding. <laughs> it's great. He can play, he can headbutt. He's still a little head shy around people, which I totally don't blame him. But uh, his head is much better now. Oh, we got Luna doing the balancing act here. She's determined to get even higher. She's gonna climb into the living tree if she has to. That is our day six right now. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. It's raining, but the goats are out eating. We're undercover, so we're not getting wet. We're gonna get wet as soon as we try to go back to the bus though. I was able to get some pretty good drone footage today. Uh, so you can see where we're working. You can see actually our whole, the whole area that we currently have fenced in and our surrounding areas, which include Blue Garden and Swiss Village. Okay, check this out. From our location, you can see the Newport Bridge. You can see the bay where all of the um, cruise ships come in, the big cruise ships. Actually, one of the cruise ships that was there the other day was taller than the, uh, than the Newport Bridge. It was incredible. I thought it was a misconception in my mind, but checked it out. It certainly was just that big. Uh, they make cruise ships really, really big. And uh, yeah, that's, that's right in our view. And then on the other side is Ocean Ave, which uh, if you watch my other videos, you're very familiar with. We work down there quite frequently. And really this neighborhood between here and Ocean Ave, I do believe is the most beautiful spot on the planet Earth. It's absolutely gorgeous. Everybody is very conscious of the environment and they try to keep their land looking perfect keeping the invasive species out. That's what we're doing here. And they want to keep that restored and keep that look. The aesthetic of Newport, which the aesthetic goes so much further. Biodiversity is a key factor there. Um, this was a beautiful place before people came and it remains a beautiful place today. The gardens here are absolutely beautiful and the folks here definitely do not want invasive plants or invasive bugs or any of that. So they do what they can to keep the properties looking as beautiful as possible in their natural, original <laughs> state with growth of plants that are from the area. So that's what the goats help and that is something they really enjoy to do. The goats love helping out because they like to eat. And directly across the street from us is Blue Garden. I have not been there myself, but I hear it is spectacular. I believe it's open once or twice a week. And for a fee, you can go in, tour the Blue Garden, and enjoy the sights that they have. I definitely intend on doing that myself sometime in the near future. 
I just don't believe that they would welcome the goats <laughs> as they have a pristine, beautiful garden as the name implies. So we will go some point when we don't have the goats with us and I can get a babysitter for Jacob. And maybe by then Jacob's, they'll have figured out Jacob's ear infection and he won't have to have 24 seven supervision. So here's Sonny standing on his back legs. And as you can see, I am just up to his shoulder as far as height goes. So our big goats, they stand about seven foot six and they can eat up to about eight feet tall when they stretch their necks up. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. Uh, we are on day seven. We're actually finishing up the day right now. And by that, I just mean the sun's going down. These guys have been eating till about an hour after sunset. So if they follow me away right now and stay away, I'm gonna sneak them grain. That's uh, not always the easiest thing to do if they're sitting there hovering over me. So we'll take a walk, check out what they've done. You can see that they've eaten as much as they can to the height that they can. So I haven't taken anything down right here yet, but I did start taking stuff down just around the corner over here. Right over here, you can now see the face of the rock. So that's the first place we started cutting. There's still quite a bit to do. And then up on that next level, there's quite a bit to do. But uh, I think these guys are finally getting bored with the stuff that they can reach. However, there is still quite a bit of plant material for them to eat right here. You guys are so pushy. So yeah, our day seven is going along well. It looks like uh, they still have plenty to eat. This was a lot denser than initially thought. There's another area that we've cleared in front of the, in front of the rock face. You can see a lot more of that. That's where they've been standing on the rock face sideways and then leaning out over the bushes. And uh, as you can see, I think this is Ang right here falling through the bush. So we are down to nine more days, I think, left to our season. And then we will be back at the sanctuary for the winter. And that means no income. Um, no income from goatscaping at the very least. Goat team one, so we stay out for six months of the year, clearing land, as you can see, to earn money for the Sanctuary of Hope to help support the other animals in need. We, uh, we take in all sorts of animals with a variety of disabilities. Some are healthy, they just need a good home. Some have disabilities and that can get very expensive. But even for our healthy guys, I just drew up shots that helps that protect these guys from a ninja worm. And that's about $175 worth of shots right there. And that's with me giving the shots. So uh, yeah, any help would be terrific. If anybody wants to help us, you could help support the Sanctuary of Hope by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Join our Patreon. Uh, that goes a long ways. That's extremely helpful. And then we know we have a certain amount of income coming in each month and that helps us to budget. Uh, if you'd like to, if you're in the area and you'd like to volunteer, we can always use that. We are home to almost 70 goats and we're actually bringing in nine more. That's an interesting situation I will post about very soon. And these guys will be back at the sanctuary with all the rest of the goats. We also have a cow, a horse, a horse. <laughs> we also have a cow, two horses, two ponies, a mini horse and a donkey. Um, let's see. We have a duck and a goose and two pigs. Each one of them have a story and there's a reason why they're at the Sanctuary of Hope, but we don't turn away goats because they are ill, injured, or anything like that. 
we'll take the special need goats because they need a home too. Just because you have special needs doesn't mean that you should not have a good home and a good life. So that is one thing our sanctuary does. I have learned recently that there are sanctuaries that don't. They screen their goats for every ailment. They don't want imperfect animals. And uh, it's a little mind blowing to me. That's what the sanctuaries are there for. And I know most sanctuaries, uh, they do take in the needy and that's why they're there. So we're one of them. And uh, if you could help in any way, it is truly appreciated.